Okay, hello nephews, nieces, and anyone else who's listening. Uh, this is Valadevin here again with... Uh, this time I am playing Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. The game so nice they named it twice or three times, depending on how you view that uh, Year Zero in there. Uh, yeah, kind of a ridiculous name. Or, or at least a very long-winded name. Um, but very cool concept. Kind of the real-time uh, sort of a sort of a top-down or isometric RPG thing going on here, uh, but with uh, XCOM-style combat. So a lot of credit for that. And and it is and it is very fun to play that way. Uh, it, it I think it kind of solves a problem that you had in XCOM. Of they made it very they made it very difficult to set yourself up in a cool in a cool way to attack. And with this, you know, you just kind of you, you stalk around uh, so much so that your characters are named stalkers. And you know, find the find the right place to get set up, and and then once you set up, you you go into this uh, cool XCOM style combat, and uh, that's that's very cool, very very fun idea. Uh, sadly, there are a few execution problems I'm gonna have to get into, and and it really does bum me out that. I that I can't just uh, I, that I can't just give un unqualified praise here. There's it, it's re it really is such a fantastic concept that I want to just be able to say, and it was executed perfectly, and everything about it is wonderful. Uh, but I'm just not quite going to be able to do do that. And you know that's that kind of that's kind of sad. You know it's. Sad to see a game not live up to its full potential. Uh, I might, I, I might get to that later though, just because I don't want to. I don't want to start with negativity. I do think there's a lot to like about this game, and and I want to, and I want to build it up a little at least uh, before I before I get into you know tearing it down. So. So let me get let me, so anyway the story in here gets as a post-apocalyptic affair. Uh, the the mutants in the title is the that the characters you play are mutants. Uh, so as you can see in the character portraits up here, one of them is just like a duck person. The other one's a big uh, pig hog person monster creature uh, and that's uh, and and the reasons for that are hinted at but not really explained and maybe they're maybe they're explained later on maybe we eventually get a explanation for uh, what's going on where they where the where the mutants came from or anything but I haven't played that far and Sadly, I do not know if I will. Uh, I guess I'm just going to get into it here. Even though, like I said, I wanted to be a little more positive first. Uh, this game has a pretty gnarly difficult curve, difficulty curve. And honestly, I guess one of the reasons why I'm trying to be positive is I can hardly even say that that's a negative. Like, I almost don't want to say that that's a negative even though even though you know being honest that I like I said I am seriously considering just uh, stopping to play the game because the difficulty curve was too steep and I got sick of just you know never being able to win a fight but uh, but it you know it's kind of a it's kind of a part of the XCOM combat the XCOM games are you know notoriously difficult and have and yet known for having a whole, you know, you just, you end up getting killed uh, easily and quickly and with, with no remorse or, uh, or mercy involved. So, 
So, so anyway, uh, you guys, uh, you guys, uh, Andin, Andin, Richard, Kyler, uh, Kaylin, if you care about these videos, you might, you uh, might not be familiar with the XCOM game, so I should probably explain that a little. Uh, so XCOM is a series where you play uh, an alien invasion defense force. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Actually, one I I actually played the the very earliest XCOM games that were back on DOS. I I remember uh, I talked a little about DOS before, and and uh, yeah, you know I played the old XCOM games on in the DOS days. Uh, they were they were fun back then, and they made a remake in 2012, 2013. Uh, and that was still a really fun game so you know great so they 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 really are just a fine set of games the the XCOM games they've they've never they 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 really have uh, kind of just never let me down like I've always appreciated them and gotcha. and you know so it's got this uh you know tactical combat you've got the grid going on and you just uh, and so you can move your units into position. Uh, cover tends to be very important, so you try to move around. Oh, cover, and so I just mind controlled this dude. This is one of my enemies uh, that I and, and I got to mind control him here. So I'm having him fight his fight his friend. See if I can you know get that infighting to take him out. Up right here, and so, and that I think that that might have been one of the things that made the early XCOM games really cool, is that they had things like mind control and uh, pretty robust abilities. I uh, I'll probably have to do an XCOM, uh, you know, review or playthrough or something uh, in this series later on at one point. And I'll have to get into talking, and I'll have to do some research on what made them so special. Was it? Uh, but they they were they were very cool. Uh, but this is not a review. This is not. I'm not playing XCOM today. I'm playing Mutant Year Zero: Road to Eden, and it is a different game. So so here we go. So anyway, yeah. So. This little bar gives you the actions your character can take. Uh, over here, over here are like your special abilities. So this guy can grow wings for a f and fly for a turn. He can also, you know, cripple a guy so that they can't walk around. That's, uh, you know, and everyone's got, you know, their own special abilities. Uh, one of the one of the interesting things I found about this game is that it does not shy away from. Some stuff. Like one of the one of the guy's special abilities oh, is man, like you are the eat shit. corpses to regain health, and I'm just like, ooh, that is that is grim. Uh, not that I don't use it, because yeah, whoo, it is. Because uh, like I said, this is a tough as nails game. I honestly have had a lot of trouble getting through that fight. I think this time I started a test recording just before, and. I made sure to take out the shaman first. The shaman is a class of unit that uh, calls in a bunch of reinforcements. So I made sure to get hit, get rid of him first. And On me. man, I guess that worked because I did pretty well in that fight. So I don't know. Maybe I will keep going. Who knows? Or maybe this Magnus guy is taking it. Um, I just kind of figured out I and just barely recruited this uh, this character named Magnus. He's the more human-looking dude out of the out of these three guys, and and he's got a really nice gun. And he's Shocker got some cool revealed. mind control powers there too. So just a cool guy. Okay, so I got another one of these. This is a nice kind of longer range gun. So you know. So anyway, yeah. So this is a uh, so now that I'm out of combat, this is the other kind of game mode. And you walk around and stock. 
I can turn my flashlight on and off. When he's got the flashlight on, you move a little faster, but if you are close to guys, you know, you're a little easier to spot. So I usually walk around with the flashlight until I realize I'm getting close to some guys. And then I turn the flashlight off. We sneak around, I find a good position to attack from. And that's kind of a lot of the gameplay. And so, so yeah, I started in the middle of combat because I did that test here. And now I am going, now I am just walking around uh, trying to find it, all of the loot. It is a very, it is, I don't know if it's a very loot based game, but you definitely want to go around and make sure you collect all the loot. You got to get the resources. Uh, I guess in some ways that kind of harkens back to the XCOM thing as well. Uh, it is very, uh, you know, based on being able to, you know, find the guys and, you know, build new equipment. All right. Oh, and I think that is the baby, so maybe maybe I'll do a part two. Maybe I'll have to make cut this short. I don't know. We'll see, but I should probably go take care of the baby now. And I'm back. All right. So, yeah, had to take care of the baby there. He's such a cute little baby. Love him so much. Uh, you guys, I don't think you've met your cousin Alistair. Oh, that'll be fun for you. Um, anyway, as long as I'm still in the menu screen here, I guess I'll go over it. Uh, here's your sort of skill tree and your stat tree. Um, level up, you get points. Uh, here's the inventory. You can switch out uh, different types of guns or, uh, you know, armor, various things like that. Uh, pretty standard, I guess. Probably, probably don't even need to get into it, actually, because it's straightforward but uh <laughs> let's just not worry about that all right and so so i do have a bunch of these emp grenades and i think that will work well for fighting these pair of robots see this is the interesting thing that little red circle shows you how close their detection range is so you uh, and it's it's got a little bit of give which i think is cool because that lets you kind of do do this hide 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 and then and so once you're hidden you're pretty much uh compl just completely hidden until you reveal uh you'll see the little ambush button on the bottom that's what lets you reveal yourself and start taking shots and fighting the fighting the dudes so it's uh it, it, it is uh, it is definitely an interesting system there and it makes it uh it makes it makes it interesting because you go in you're trying to get the good position uh you get sometimes you got to do something like that where you just kind of like duck down and hide because a thing is because someone's next to you so should i ambush now I think I'm going for that. All right. So this guy. Let's start it off with just a quick. You know what? I should probably move him first. To go take a position behind the car. Anyway, yeah. So you know, I. For you, it's. It, for you, it's barely been seconds, but of course, for me, I've been taking care. Of, I've been taking care of a baby for a while, so for a couple of hours, so I have my train of thought. So anyway, I'll just uh, you know start anew and see what I can find interesting to talk about. Uh, hope you guys are doing well with the whole. Uh, you know, COVID situation. Uh, I wonder, uh, you know, I am curious how, how you kiddos are doing. I'm sure, uh, you know, school is canceled, you're out of school. Uh, I know for some of you that might actually be working out fine because you were having trouble being in the classroom. It was uh, it was something you you were struggling with to do, do well, do effectively. So 
uh, hopefully you're taking this as a chance to kind of kind of do better maybe a chance to practice you know learning and studying material and all of that and you know, also it. managing your own emotions and feelings and everything to, so that you'll be better prepared to go do stuff in the classroom once once you're back once you're back there taking out these robots I got another turn Take it out because one of the thing, one of the interesting things they did is that people's powers they recharge via via getting kills. So you have to get a certain number of kills I did that. What do you think about to that, huh? recharge some of your powers. So that guy's mind control power it had the couple of skulls showing up in there, and that is because. You had to get that many kills to be able to use that power again. And so that's why I say it. And then that, that leads to these interesting situations like that where I'm going, okay, so I'm going to have him. So I'm going to. He's where I go. He's he's down. He's at, he's at low health. Who do I. And you kind of go, okay, who am I going to have get the kill? Probably going to need to move to get a good... Yeah, there we go. That's a quality angle. And take the shot. Boom. Police bots down. So anyway, yeah, you know, I think I think there's, I think you know, this whole quarantine situation is, uh, you know, it's unnerving and it's definitely a disruption. Uh, but I think there could be some real opportunities that if we Join up. we pay attention to, we can do well. So I hope you kiddos are looking for the opportunities and trying to take them. Um, hopefully this isn't too dated. Uh, I don't know. Maybe by the time you watch this, we'll we'll all just be back in school at work and. Now that will even be an issue anymore. So, don't know how quickly you get to watch these, watch these videos. Um, so, do, 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 do. so, anyway, yeah. So I'm back to exploring here, and yeah, this, uh, you know, this game really works. I might have been hard on it. I was, I was saying, you know, it's tough as nails, and it is. It is very challenging. It is getting tough but now that I'm actually getting through it a little made a couple of adjustments and it seems to be working well um, I am feeling much better and having a lot more fun so I mean what can I say games are always a little more fun when you win um, I do think that that is one of these things though you you have to have the challenge you have to at the very least you have to know that you can lose and you know ideally you know i think i'm uh so I, I don't know if you guys know about the game dark souls but i think that's one of the reasons why dark souls is so well liked is you know not just because it's 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 hard as nails and it has a lot of challenge but i think the the challenge is fair and you know there there is that that satisfaction in overcoming a challenge there is that great feeling of Oh, you know, I fought this boss 50 times and it takes me out every time and I just can't get through it. And then finally, you know, you develop a strategy that's working and you uh, and you polish it and you go in and you perfect it. And then finally it works and you get through and you, you finally defeat that boss. And it's so satisfying knowing, oh, I finally got it. I finally took him out. That's so that this is. And then, you know, it's just a great feeling of accomplishment. And so maybe, I think maybe I'm having a little bit of that with this game going, ah, yes, I finally rejiggered my party here, 
and things are going better and this is so great I'm actually able to take out some of these robots and you know some of these bigger bigger groups of tougher enemies and this is just this is just uh, this is just awesome it feels so good to finally be able to be doing that um, yeah so and one of the interesting things is I think that is actually an important lesson for life as well I think there's a lot of truth to life needs to I, I mean getting a little farther I think there might be something to the idea that uh, you need the possibility of failure in life and you need some sort of uh, you know weakness or something or chal or at least challenge in in life and learning and everything you do for for it to be satisfying for there to be any true satisfaction in overcoming it um, my mom talks about the principal of my high school saying that he believed and he wanted to build a school where where the students had a sense of authentic achievement and i really like that phrase i really like this idea of authentic achievement because uh, i mean let's let's put it in gaming terms here you have so you have the little achievements that pop up and when you have the you know the achievement that's like ah oh, you put in the disc congratulations you started playing the game and i gave you an achievement for it uh everyone's just kind of you know you, you chuckle over it and maybe it's kind of fun but you know they, there's definitely nothing satisfying or um you know or it doesn't actually feel like an accomplishment you know it it, it i mean it, it, it those essentially work only as a joke on the name achievement because we know you know that there's no real achievement in putting in the game disc or you know starting the first level or any tiny thing like that whoa big tough guy i'll uh yeah, maybe i'll come back to you later friend friend who doesn't want to hurt me i'm sure <laughs> uh but yeah yeah this and so i think that and so i think there really is a, a great thing about this idea of authentic achievement and finding something that's uh, that that's a challenge and then it's really meaningful to to overcome and improve your yourself and your abilities with uh, I think that's one of the reasons I I've actually always liked physics is that it well I, I don't know if I'm being honest I think one of the big reasons I liked physics and math and everything is because everyone said oh you're so smart and, uh, when <laughs> and you know, when when some of the challenge hit me, I was honestly a little unprepared for it because everyone acts like math and science is uh, so debilitatingly challenging and difficult, and it actually came to me easy. And when when it stopped coming to me easy, um, I, I actually kind of dealt with some of these issues that I'm talking about. It was uh, I, I think it was more satisfying, and it was more and and it did give me a real sense of pride and accomplishment when I finally did work through some of the more serious problems but it was uh, but it was a shock because in a lot of ways I I just hadn't had I just hadn't had anything that challenging yet because I I went into physics and math and I I mean you know I'd had other things because I grew up I anyway I don't know I'm uh, I'm getting into rambling. I think I think I had a good point. So you know, pick out pick out the good parts of that and just go uh, go with go with what I said there. The the good parts. Oh, hold on. Um, better check if the baby is crying again. <laughs> Okay, so baby is going to bed now. So a couple of recordings and here I am getting back into it. Don't know if I have much more to say though. Uh, I mean, I didn't want to leave it on that kind of sudden ending last time, but I feel like I've said most of what can be said. I've kind of explained the game. Um, let's do, I will, so I'm going to search through this area a little more see if there's any loot I missed and then I will go back to the the base it's called the Ark. Um, 
And that, that brings me to, I did want to talk a little more about the story here. So, yeah, let me get to that too. So, the, uh, I talked a little about how the characters are mutants. And what exactly that means or how that happened is uh, not explained so far. There's, uh, there's kind of a mystery around it, so uh, I bet it gets explained at some point, but I can't say whether it does or not, because uh, I haven't played that far. Uh, there's, the, it's very much in this uh, post-apocalyptic vibe, like the, uh, you know, what we would consider modern day humans living like us are called the ancients. And when you run across things, oh, like here, here's the thing, a uh, defibrillator. Uh, <laughs> and it kind of gives these funny descriptions of how the people in the post-apocalyptic world interpret things. So, like, the defibrillator appears to be a relaxation device. This diagram shows an ancient relaxing. Well, the device was used. <laughs> So, yeah, you get that kind of thing for, like, a fridge this was used to help or, you know, like, even a telescope. Kind of they call the telescope oh, a relaxing. far looker. Maybe I'll use and it to unwind. So, and back and to so the it is one of these things. It's very, it's very well done in that sense. Like, it definitely gives you, uh, definitely gives you a sense of the, the world and how they're, how this is connected to the world we live in, but is definitely changed and is completely unlike the world we live in and is is nothing more than uh, something that's built on the bones of our world it doesn't doesn't have like any more connection than that uh, as as if the walking pig and talking duck didn't didn't let you know that uh, but uh, but yeah, so it, it also kind of is very much in that post-apocalyptic feel. Um, you know, the the old world is lost, all of the technology is lost, and the world is mostly just a radioactive wasteland. There's a whole thing of like the you're you're one of these stalkers, and you go on an expedition out into the zone, which is just the whole radioactive wasteland outside of the arc and it's uh you, you know i've never been that big a fan of post-apocalyptic stuff uh it it just it just isn't it's just never managed to be that interesting to me um part of it might just kind of be i don't i don't particularly like the aesthetic i've always found it the you know kind of grungy very very worn beaten down uh stuff being in shambles uh that's always just kind of ended up being not not i mean not that cool looking and not that and you know kind of not that interesting I, I suppose there's a certain degree of hey if i wanted to see broken down stuff in shambles i'd go to a junkyard um so you know, and it is one of these things, this whole used future has... Uh, it took me a while to appreciate that at all. I was a big uh, Star Trek fan when I was younger. And, you know, seeing other science fiction shows where it had more of that used future vibe where stuff was a little more rickety and put together even though it was a spaceship. Uh, that always just kind of seemed silly to me. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've come around, I've changed that attitude, but I still prefer the Star Trek approach where things are sleek and clean and, and you know, I also like uh, the optimism that that represents, uh, where it's kind of like we have a beautiful future where things have improved and gotten better. And so I, I think that could be part of it. I think I, I've had trouble getting into post-apocalyptic stuff because I, I I mean in some ways I just don't believe that we're actually headed for that I uh, I, I don't want to necessarily write it off as a possibility I do kind of worry about the future and say hey we got to make sure that we're paying attention to anything that could uh, look you know like I guess like the coronavirus that 
everyone's so scared about. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think that coronavirus could end civilization. It's, it's not that bad of a disease, um, but you know, it, it, it certainly feels that way with some of the measures we're taking. Um, but you know, we do have to be, uh, we, we do have to be wary and be taking the proper steps to prevent things like uh, like a really bad global pandemic or or any of these other or nuclear war or any of these other problems that that could legitimately end, end human civilization uh, because we would prefer human civilization keep uh, keep chugging along we don't we, uh, we kind of need human civilization uh, so yeah Anyway, all right, let me go back to the Ark. Uh, maybe we'll meet the Elder, who's the leader of the Ark. And uh, he's up there. I don't know. Does Your search about? for Hammond continues. Good. So, yeah, he's just kind of is the leader of the Ark. And he has these the arc's heart. inspiring speeches, which is really connected to the ca with the characters. I guess it could be curiosity that big. I don't know if I'm downfall. connected that much with the characters. I, I, I don't hate the them. Um, Searching I for something that's think not there's, there. there's an interesting back and forth. The pig guy is kind of a very dedicated stalker. He's always about him. going. He, he's all about... Survive. He's all about like we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta Pull up take care tools, of things, and, and you know, do do what they want to make the world better. Got a swell time out and, there. You know, help help the, our our hey, allies in the arc. And and the duck is a little more jaded, and you know, just kind of you know, just kind of trying to get by or whatever. So. be super long range which would be cool uh, I can't decide I'm gonna try that later um, so uh, I mean there are characters there and that that characterization is cool and uh, and something that's valuable and laudable and I'm gonna go ahead and use that weird to put a scope on a weird little shotgun like that but we're gonna do it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Scopey shotgun. Anyway, take it easy. So, so yeah, uh, this is kind of where you uh, do your upgrades. So I just put, you know, the scopes on the weapons. If I had a little more weapon parts, I could have done a weapon upgrade. My just upgrade stalkers. a weapon to a different level. I was just and reclining here, dreaming of when I'd see you again. I guess dreams do Five come Malta. true. Does she have any? Nope. No. No med packs. So med packs are. Med packs are. We're just like. You know, they're worth more than gold or whatever else would be worth tons of money here in the bleak post-apocalyptic future so let's go down to the metal fields I think that was robot land but I have a bunch of these EMP grenades so that might help me get through robot land oh no this was that okay well I'm, I'm tougher I've gained some levels I got some power so uh, anyway um, so anyway, yeah, it's basically just it's basically just kind of a post-apocalyptic story. The uh, the road to Eden in the title is refers to you know a legend about Eden, one of the one of the places where things are like they were in the old world and everything is just kind of nice and things aren't horrible and it's so and that's so lovely. But uh, could it be true? Could it even be true? And I don't know if it, it is in the end. That's that's actually kind of an interesting question that maybe I'll find out by, if I keep playing. But and but 
you know, I I don't know now. So I'm not hiding here, we're just Yeah, ducks better take cover, he's I didn't get Okay, maybe, uh... Okay, I hope Duckman has... Oh, good. He's got his EMP grenade. You know, where is the next one? I don't even know if there's another one anywhere that close. I'm gonna just try... Shooting just... I'm just gonna try... See what happens if I just try gunning this guy down. Gotcha. So we got yeah. There's there aren't any there aren't like other robots around uh, that I can see anywhere. So yeah, I'm just gonna go for it here. We'll see how it goes, and that'll uh, that'll probably be the end of this uh, this stream here. So so let's make it a good one. You got get this uh, let's get this robot so I haven't I haven't showed you the the whole thing about uh, the the uh, some of the some of the like some weapons are have a some weapons have a silent mode so if you use them around around enemies they'll noise detected Still, uh... Oh, he did. Oh, no, he is bringing friends in. Okay. This is, uh... Oh, geez, that's a lot of friends, too. Uh, yeah. This is... This is probably gonna end badly. I don't... I don't think this is, uh... This is gonna be going well for me. So it'll be... Whatever. Again, you know, that hard-as-nails difficulty is... And, you know, it... It's legitimately a tough question. Is that is that good? Is that a feature, or is that just a pain that makes it hard to play the game and be able to enjoy it? I don't know. Oh, jeez, that's coming. Oh, jeez, the robots are over there. This one guy is over here. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I do not know. What do, what do you got, Magnus? You got any... You got any angle on this guy? You got any way you can... Get in, take him out? I don't know. Go, uh, go big or go home here? Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna lose this fight. I'm you know what? I'm I'm just not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna sign off here. You guys have a great rest of the day. Love you all very much. And uh, enjoy and I'll talk to you next time.